If you're looking for the cheapest coins in Madden 23, head over to AOEAH.com. They are fast and reliable. And make sure to use code WOLF for 3% off. Link is in the description. All right, welcome to today's video. I like to do these once a month if I can. Showing you guys the coaching adjustments. This is ideal for the people that are newer to Madden and haven't seen none of the coaching adjustment videos uh, that are on the channel or anywhere on YouTube. So make sure you guys drop a like, check out the members area. We have full scheme breakdowns. If you're looking for a defense and an offense, full scheme setups and stuff like that, we got you covered, man. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff, but we do focus a lot in our gameplays on the meta and what really works because it is a game of meta. If you're going to want to compete at the highest level, you will have no choice but to use meta defense. So if you're new, get to know it. And right now it's the dollar defense. It could be nickel over depending on your defensive personnel, edge rushers and stuff like that. You can be using the nickel over. Um, there's the nickel 3-3 as well. We have all that in the members area. 3-3 I never really put out because they patched the defense and kind of nerfed it. So I didn't want to do that to you guys. I just want to give you guys the hardcore stuff. We have tight offset tight end on the uh, on the offense. Bunched, wild wow, true week. Saints-based offenses. And the Saints is what won the belt this year. So we knew that from the beginning. All right, so today, let me show you guys. Okay, the coaching adjustments, if you're new. How do you get to the coaching adjustments? You click the right stick in on your controller. Bring you to the coaching adjustments. Now, your first one is the auto flip defensive play call. Uh, the CPU will flip your defensive play to best match the offensive formation. If you're newer to Madden, right, you want to leave this on. There are defenses like cover six, cover three, those defenses where they need to align properly with their middle blues. You'll have inside thirds, outside thirds. Let me show you guys in a cover three really quick. If you look at the play out right here, you'll notice you'll have three deep blues. Okay, you have outside thirds on the, on the outside and you have a guy in the middle. If you do not have auto flip on, there is a chance that your blue lines up on the right and then your opponent's trips, uh, his three wide receiver set is on the left. And now you're getting cooked up the middle of the field on the left side because your blue's on the wrong side. That will be eliminated if you leave auto flip defensive play call on. I recommend, like I said, if you're newer to do it. Now, if you're running a defense, that's a man defense and stuff like that, you wanna turn this to off. Reason being, let me show you why. If we come back to the defense right here, which is gonna be dollar or two, three, same thing. You'll see we'll have plays, uh, actually it's two, three. This is not the same, my apologies. Let's assume we're gonna run quarter, all right? Just to give you guys an example. Actually, I don't even know if that's a good idea to run this either. Okay, yeah, you see cover two man spy, right? If you have someone that's blitzing in that formation or in that alignment, and you do not have auto flip or, uh, or you have auto flip on, you never know who your, your blitzer is or who you're gonna be using in coverage and you always have to alternate back and forth, kind of hoping to see something that would actually benefit us to show us that in these formations. And it's usually dollar, but right here, it doesn't seem to be the case in this defense. So it's a little bit harder to explain. But what that's gonna do, it's going to always put you on the same guy, the same blitzer. Uh, the cover two man blitz from the dollar defense is what I'm exactly what I'm talking about. So if you have auto flip on, Sometimes your blitzing linebacker is your user or the guy that's in coverage is your user. You never know because you don't know what the offense is picking. So off and on, like I said, you're newer, leave it on. That's what I would do. Auto alignment, if you're running like a bunch of base defense. So base defense is when uh, you come out and it's the same look every single time. So you'll see that the two, three uh, default play art, you see the little blue circles. No matter what defensive play call you call, right? They're always gonna line up in base. So if we switch over here, we come to base, these guys will always show up where these little blue dots are, no matter what defense you pick. Now, the good thing about this is if you're running a man blitz, but you want it to look like zone defense, that will help you. However, you also have to be careful that in man de and if you're running man defense with it with base on, these aren't these guys aren't going to line up properly or on their man in man defense because you're going to be hiding it, right? You're going to be hiding your cover threes, you're going to be hiding your cover twos, your cover one, your cover six invert within this formation by having it set to base because they're always going to go where these X's are in the play art. So be careful with that. Uh, what I tend to do is I just leave it on default. You can put it in mana line, which is the opposite, which these guys will show up in man defense instead of the zone look. So they'll line up in front of the wide receivers. Now this could be confusing to a lot of zone defenses because it is it is Madden and the coding is atrocious. So some defenses, maybe like big nickel, we always had problems with big nickel. If you run a man alignment in a zone, your deep blue that's supposed to be on the right side is on the left side in man, in man defense, which means if they throw a streak on your outside to your right side opposite, the damn touchdown. You don't want that. So like I said, 
Default, unless you're running a lot of blitzes or you're running like DB fire from the uh, dollar defense, get to know that play if you're new. Uh, ball and air defense, late game. If you're just trying to keep your opponent from scoring, swat ball, okay? The AI will attempt to swat ball or if they're aggressive catching you. You don't click on an aggressive catches the way you used to. So in regs right now, it's going to be Mike Evans, Tom Brady. That connection right there, that duo in Madden 23 is very, very powerful, okay? So my recommendation to you guys is if you're facing someone like that and they're highballing with the aggressive catches to put the ball in the air on swap ball. Don't be trying to go for picks, okay? You have to play ball where the AI will play the ball in two-man catch situations because you will get aggressive caught by Mike Evans and receivers that are like that that will catch most of them. Your best attempt at uh, stopping it is the swap ball animation. This is something new that we haven't gone over. It's just at this point, a lot of people just don't realize swap ball and do not click on or click on and hold X. Click on, hold X. That's what you want to do in these uh, aggressive catch situations because the high ball with the aggressive catch is overpowered in this game. So remember that in the ball and air defense. Cornerback matches, I don't really use it this, this year, but you can run speed. This is the only thing I'm going to uh, run is uh, the fast cornerback will match up versus fast receiver. So if they're throwing like drags and stuff like that, or you have a good defensive personnel as far as cornerbacks go, you can use this on speed. All right. You can go by overall. I, I really just stay away from overall. Now, you could go by height when you're in the red zone because a lot of people like to high ball into the red zone. So if I'm like at the 10, I can try to high ball to Mike Evans, put your cornerbacks by height and just hope you got someone that can match his height and go from there in the red zone. Anywhere else you want to go by speed or uh, keep it on balance up to you. Option defense. If you're facing a Lamar Jackson mobile QBs, they try to run the ball. Put this on conservative. The pro is it focuses on the QB on the option, but the con is diving pitch left open on the option. However, if you put this on conservative and you run cover four quarters from let's say four three even six one out of the Kansas City Chiefs defensive playbook, uh, the defense is going to shut it all down, regardless if it's a RPO or if it's a dive. The defense is going to slow it down, and that's going to be a future video. People won't run defense. I'm going to post that defense again because, like I said, I like to show people that are newer how to stop the run very easy. Uh, you can go to aggressive, but I don't really recommend it, man. It's either balance or conservative. Like I said, if it, if they run one option play, I put it on conservative and I leave it there. 100% the rest of the game. Strip ball if you need a turnover. You want to go aggressive? Late game, I wouldn't recommend doing this just out of nowhere because they will score touchdowns on you. Or you can go to conservative, right? You're facing a better running back. You can go to conservative as far as strip, a strip ball, but I usually just keep this on balance. Tackling though, I'll be either aggressive or conservative. Late game, I need the ball aggressive, conservative if I want to slow down very powerful uh, running backs, which if you look at the con, increased chance of allowing yards after contact, but the AI defenders will tackle conservatively. So to me, I feel like conservative is better when you're facing powerful running backs, but it, it, to each their own, you can run what you want. Now, the most important things that you can understand right here are the last four on this on this uh, coaching adjustment is your flat. So you'll have flats, you have curls, you have cloud, soft squats, hard, hard flats, and stuff like that. You can change how far back they play. So on a first and 10 situation, right, and I'm just going to be running cloud flats or hard flats, I can change this to five or 10. Typically, what I'll do is I'll start at 10, and if they need more yards, I amp it up 15, 20. So these are your clouds on the outsides, on the sidelines of the field. You can do that. Now, what a lot of people like to do is they will run like a 15 yard, 20 yard uh, cloud flat and then a five yard curl flat and they'll run a Mabel defense. So they'll put a blue out there toward the sideline. So let's say your opponent is on the left hash, right? The marker. You want to put a cloud at 20, 25 on the right. And then you want to put a curl flat underneath that at five. So you'll have a Mabel where they guard the flat route table route. That's real quick to the sidelines. And then they'll go 25 yards back and guard that so they can't hit you with corner routes. They can't hit you with a, a flood concept. Very good setup for the flood concept. And then your yellows in between, you can do the same thing. Like I said, these are all situational. They need less yards or they're throwing underneath. You can run fives. Uh, you can go further back if they're, if they're throwing over your linebackers, you can go 10, 15, uh, 10, 20, 25, 30, if they need a lot of yards. So let's say it's fourth and 30. Maybe you got them to a fourth and 20. Boom, 20 yards. Boom, 20 yards, right? This right here, flats, you could go 20. You could do this like this. You know what I mean? Sometimes you'll get that where it just resets, but that's just the game because it's atrocious. Zone coverage right here, it, like I said, it's going to be the same for all of them, okay? It's going to be the same for all of them. Zone coverage right here, remember, if you're running match defense, 
you put this on match. So cover three seams, cover four quarters, those types of defenses run match concepts. So you can put zone coverage in the match. Now, if you put your zone drops here, right, it kind of eliminates match right here. So make sure that you're going to run this. You're going to put this on default, default, match like this. All right. You guys get it? Simple and easy stuff. Try to remember as much as you can. I know we're kind of hauling ass, but it is what it is. On the offensive side, if you don't want to turn the ball over, you want to go to conservative on your running back while you're holding RB or R1. The con is you can't juke. You can't spin. You can just run the damn ball. However, you won't fumble. If you watch my gameplays, I never fumble because I automatically go to conservative most of the times. If you're in the red zone, you need that tutty. You're at the one yard line. Go to aggressive so you can attempt the score. Get into the end zone. You know what I mean? But you do risk the chance of fumbling the ball. However, if you're in a losing situation, you have no choice. Put it on aggressive, man. Or if you just leave it on balance. Blocking, we don't use that. Intermediate pass catching, I don't do that. And I don't use none of these three. I wouldn't recommend using any of these this year in Madden 23. We haven't been using these for a couple Maddens already. However, if you want to mess around with it, you can. But the blocking, I think you get holding calls. So be careful with your blocking. All right. Uh, and that that's pretty much it. I'm sure maybe I left a couple things out, but it's a lot to remember, bro. And it's all situational. So when you come into these situations, you start remembering as you build the, the repetitions and stuff like that. You go through the practice mode, right? You play all the games. Uh, but like I said, check out the members area. We got everything you need to go on high win streaks to get you better at the game. I will be dropping basic tips videos coming already for people that are newer to Madden. So stay tuned. Drop a like. Love you guys, man. Peace.